Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, remember, I got a blog, and I got a BitChute channel, and sometimes I put on BitChute the things that uh, YouTube would probably not appreciate on their channel. Um... I did a short video on the lockdown in the over in the Middle East, a country that's not getting the G Wiz one two three four five, and they're doing a lockdown on the the holidays. Uh, I, their holidays and the Lord's holy days are different, but I you know do a. Uh, short video so keep that in mind i don't know how long i'm going to be online lord willing with that in mind this is going to be might be one of the either the last or one of the last uh, of the temple series now there is a temple in ezekiel they call it ezekiel's temple some people uh the most of people that I know of, they call it the temple during the millennial reign of Christ, uh, the thousand years, which is kind of how I look at it. Some people say, oh no, that's the, uh, the temple when Ezra and Nehemiah came back. I don't know about that. But some people think that there's going to be a temple when Christ returns on earth for a thousand years. The purpose of which is not, uh, it, it might be for worship, for the believers that are given resurrected, resurrected bodies in the first resurrection. However, the children that died in childbirth and those that were aborted and, you know, who died before uh, they're considered accountable those people are probably my opinion I've done another video on it you know where do children come from in the kingdom since believers in the resurrected bodies are like the angels in heaven that neither marry nor are given in marriage so if we're not having kids where do they come from well I think they're the kids that died in childbirth, abortion, uh, children that died young, you know, that's, and I believe that they're going to be given a, a new body and given a chance to grow up. Well, being that they haven't gotten saved and they're not uh, given their resurrect, uh, their perfected bodies, there's a difference between them getting a new flesh body and a the resurrected body in the spirit there's a big difference between that but i think those that are going to be uh dialed in childbirth that were giving flesh and blood bodies i think that they're going to be have to um adhere to the old covenant and hopefully they learn that uh, the sacrifice that Christ made is far better than the Old Testament covenant. So there might actually be animal sacrifices during the millennial reign. But that's just kind of like, I don't really want to get into that because during the millennial reign, we'll have excellent teachers teaching us the ways of the Lord and Satan will be bound for a thousand years so we'll have a thousand years to know the right way to do things so those of us that had abortions will hopefully have a chance to raise the children without the interference of satan so with that in mind keep in mind that the temple was originally envisioned to be a house of prayer, a house of worship, 
and a house of sacrifice. I mean, let's face it. If you, nobody in their right mind that didn't believe in the Lord is going to take the tenth of their flock or and sacrifice it unto the Lord. I mean, it's just, you know, not just not going to happen. But those that did trust in the Lord says, well, all right, I'm going to sacrifice this to the Lord, and I know he'll give me what he considers uh, proper and what I am worthy of. And the temple was the place where people would hear the Lord's law. So with that in mind, let's go to Luke chapter 1. Because, yeah, I don't want to get into the, uh, temp, uh, the, the Ezekiel's temple. I just don't want I That could be a study in and of itself. And to be honest with you, I'm not that concerned about what happens in the thousand-year reign because you're going to have those, those that make it into the kingdom for the thousand years are going to have far, far bar, better teachers than anything that I could ever do. Let them teach you about Ezekiel's temple. That's my, uh, that's my take. All right, so let's look at Luke chapter 1. All right, Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely beloved among us even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Now, who's the word? Jesus says, Jesus is the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed that in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, now remember, King Herod was, uh, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian, he was of, he was an Edomite, of Esau Edom, Idumea. And uh, if you listen to the so-called black Hebrews, they think, oh, he, he was whitey. Yeah, well, they can believe that all they want, but uh, no thank you. Who put Herod in power? Rome. Rome did. Rome was a newcomer. Uh, 30 years before the birth of Christ was when Rome conquered Judea. Prior to that, it had been under, uh, well, there was a time period when the uh, Judah was ruling for about, uh, probably about 100 years. But before that, it was Greece. Macedonia, Alexander. So, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. Now, Zacharias and Elizabeth, and Mary for that matter, were of the tribe of Levi. They were, uh, Zacharias was a Levitical priest. That was their function. They were to serve the Lord. Whereas Judah was the tribe of the kings. Now, isn't it funny? Mary was a cousin of Elizabeth. She was a Levite. Whereas Joseph was of the tribe of Judah. So, in a sense, you have a merging of the king and the priests. And we'll get more into that later. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, who was Aaron? Aaron was the brother of Moses. They were both Levites, Levitical priesthood. Verse 6, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were now both well stricken in years. They were old. 
And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. I guess that's what you call holy smoke, right? People were praying. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So here it is, the angel's telling, the angel of the Lord is telling Zacharias what to call his name, John. Guess what? The same thing happened with uh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. Oh, by the way, King Herod, was who was put in power by the Romans, uh, put money into the temple. Not because he wanted to honor God, in my opinion, but rather so that he could control the people through religion. Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. And by the way, Herod appointed the priesthood. Now, somebody decent like John, I mean, I'm sorry, like Zacharias, was burning incense. But who did you have as the high priest? Caiaphas and Ananias. I forget his, I forget exactly who it was. But Caiaphas. Who do you think put him in power? Herod. Who opposed Jesus and accused him before Pilate? Well, it wasn't the Rome Catholic, Roman Catholic priests. No. No. It was the high priest that had been appointed by Herod. Because you know full well Zacharias wouldn't have been doing that. They'd have been leading the people to Christ instead of leading them away like the high priest who was appointed by Herod and Rome. They did that to control the people. All right, so... Verse 13, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many, not all, many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias. Greek rendering of Elijah. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Now there's some people trying to tell you that John the Baptist was Elijah. Um, I don't think so. The priests, uh, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees asked him, Are you Elijah, Elias or Elijah? And he said, No. I think John the Baptist knew who he was. Okay? And besides, if uh, John was Elijah, wouldn't that be reincarnation? Which is something the Bible does not teach. You know? I mean... Elijah when it was caught up in a whirlwind into heaven. So then he gets reborn as a baby and they change his name to John. No, don't fall for that garbage. You know, there's so many lies out there, it's unbelievable. Verse 17, and he, John, shall go before him in the spirit and power of of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the Lord to make ready a people prepared 
for the Lord. Verse 18. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Angel, don't you understand? My wife had menopause years ago. It's impossible for her to have a kid. I think that's basically what he's saying here. Verse 19, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. See, Zacharias didn't believe. All right, verse 21. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. So I'm sure the job that he was doing didn't take that long. And they're like, man, what's this guy doing? You know, so. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. Ah, okay. So, you know, a lot of things happened in the temple. There were people that uh, the prophets would go to the temple, proclaim things to the people. Jesus taught in the temple. You know, uh, the apostles taught in the temple. It was the place where, you know, prayer and glorifying the Lord, that's what it was all about. So why did the uh, Lord pick the temple for Zacharias to tell him about John? Because it was a place of worship. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. You see, what happened was uh, the priests would have a certain number of days that they were would perform their duties, and then they would rotate. I don't know exactly how it is. Some people said it was like six weeks. I don't know. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. You see, to be barren, not having any children, was considered a curse from God. And now, today, um, having children is considered a curse. Oh yeah, let's abort them. Oh, you know, you need to concentrate on your career. Children, oh, they're a burden. Don't listen, you know, don't do all that. I've been reading that garbage in the Jews' papers. I mean, I'm sorry, the newspapers uh, since the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Take the pill. Have an abortion. Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph at the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. She was a Levite. The uh, Levitical priesthood carried Christ in, she carried the tabernacle of God in her womb. Think about that. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
Gabriel, an angel from God, told Mary what to call her son, Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach. Sorry. Verse 32, And thou shalt call his name Jesus, uh, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. All right, uh, verse 32. He, Jesus, he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Yeah, I know I did this study not that long ago, but, you know, it's part of the Temple series. So, uh, he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? See, there's a quest, the difference between questioning, uh, asking how something will come to pass. You know, I believe you, but how is this going to come to pass, since I'm a virgin? You know, what Mary asked a question, you know, there's a difference, because she believed, but she's asking, okay, I believe you, but how's this going to happen? You know, I'm a virgin, you know, no guy, how's this, so how's this going to work out? As opposed to Zacharias that said, don't you know me and the wife, we're, we're old, we can't have children anymore, what are you talking about? Big difference. How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth. Ah, so Elizabeth was a Levite. And Mary is a Levite. It says right here, Thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her, and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. That's basically greet, uh, a greeting. You know, it's not saluting like it's in the military, you know. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, for lo as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And that's indeed true, but the, uh, the Vatican takes it too many steps further and calls her the mother of God. Uh, that's nowhere in the Bible. I mean, she might have carried Jesus in her womb, but uh, was she God's wife? No. Uh, only if you're a member of the Mormon church, if you want to call that a church. Uh, yeah, they actually teach that Mary and God the Father did it yeah they actually teach that 
I don't think so. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent, sent empty away. Verse 54. He, the Lord, he hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. See, they were obedient to the angel of the Lord. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have, call, have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed. And he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about, and all these sayings were noised, uh, noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea, and all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd be paying attention to this kid too, right? And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies." and from the hand of all that hate us. But my church told me that God loves everybody and that we, you know, we should just preach to everybody. We love everybody. God is love. Guess what? God's people have enemies in the flesh and in the spirit that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. All right, let's hit Luke chapter 2. We're going to skip to verse 25. Now remember, when the Magi, or some say the wise men, 
came to Herod and uh, asked about the Christ child. Uh, well, they uh, left a different way, didn't go to Herod, back to Herod and tell him about the Christ child. And then Joseph was warned in a dream, take the kid to Egypt. And what did Herod do? He killed all the children in Bethlehem under, I think it was two years old, trying to get rid of the Christ child. Yeah, that wonderful Herod. Herod was a devil. His family were devils. They were the children of the devil. When Christ was sent by Pilate unto Herod, Christ didn't say not one word to him. He didn't preach the gospel to him. He didn't even say a word to him. Nothing. Think about that. Did he go to Herod and say, oh, yeah, you know, well, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus? Uh, no. Didn't say a word. Casting pearls before swine was something we were told not to do. Don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. And guess what? In the Old Testament, you know what dogs were likened to? Uh, like the men of lived in Sodom. Yeah. Those kind those were likened unto dogs. It's rebellion against the Lord. That's what it is. All right, Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Now remember, Herod is in charge of the temple. Herod appointed the high priest. Herod tried to kill Christ. Okay? So I imagine this little thing going on right here was probably not, probably not uh, on the front page of the uh, evening news papers. I don't know. Luke 2, 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law. He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall, for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Okay. Remember, they fell in sin and rising again of many in Israel. The resurrection, right? And for a sign which shall be spoken against. Oh, a sign that's going to be spoken against. By who? Herod's people, probably. Verse 35, Yea, a sword shall pierce through my soul, my own soul also, also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. Asher. Asher is just the Greek rendering of Asher. That was one of the 12 tribes. Sorry, uh, they want everybody to think that, oh, well, if you belong to Israel, you're a Jew. No, only Judah was a Jew. Jew is a slang word. You know, Judah was a tribe, one of 12, all right? Asher was another. Paul was of Benjamin, 
Uh, you had Levi. You had Judah. Naphtali. And then you had Joseph, who Ephraim and Manasseh. You know, there's more than one tribe. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Aser. She was of a great age and lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, 84, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. All right, verse 38. And she coming in that instance gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company... In, their, in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. You see, you would have a group of people uh, when you went to Jerusalem from wherever you live because, you know, you had robbers. You know, if you were just one or two people, you know, robbers would come upon you and want to steal all your stuff. Sort of like that goat in Arkansas did to me. So you'd go with a group, right? Verse 45, And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple. Christ was in the temple. You know, the Jews have a legend that when they build a temple, the Messiah will come. I strongly wonder if they have done some kind of a thing of temple in the Middle East because they keep saying something about uh, they're in talks with the Messiah. Well, that's their Messiah. That's not our Messiah. That's their Messiah. So, that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors. You know, these are people that are doctors of the law. They're not medical doctors. They're, you know, like PhDs in the university. But they know the Bible. These are people that are, uh, let's see. Uh, today, to get a doctorate degree, you're talking eight years of college. Yeah. So, that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Oh, yeah. When Jesus asks you a question, he already knows the answer. He's trying to fish that answer out of you. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, the parents, right, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son... Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And we're not talking about the carpentry shop either. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. 
All right, let's go to Luke chapter 4. Now remember, Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, just like the flood of Noah, right? 40 days, 40 nights. And he had just been baptized by John in the river Jordan. And the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. You can read about that in Luke chapter 3. But I'm just dealing, I've covered this in previous studies, so where the temple's mentioned, that's what I'm trying to get at here. So it's amazing how all the doctrines of the Bible all are interwoven into each other, just like uh, a piece of cloth. They all tie in together. And you get bits and pieces here and bits and pieces there. So, all right, verse uh, 1, Luke 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Uh, this is when he did his... 40 day fast being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward a hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of God command this stone that it be made bread Jesus and Jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God and the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Uh, a little note here. You know, in Job chapter 1, God was bragging to the Satan about Job, about what an upright man he was. And uh, what did uh, Satan say? Oh, yeah, you think Job's so great? Uh, take everything he's got and he'll curse you to his face. He'll curse you to your face. And uh, so the Lord accepted this challenge and said, okay, you can take everything he's got but you can't kill him. And that's the Bob paraphrase there. You want to read Job chapter 1. So evidently, somewhere down the line, Satan probably did the same thing with the earth and Adam and Eve. Because there was war in heaven. He was kicked out. Some people think it's in the future during the tribulation period, I think it happened in the past. I think it happened between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3, just prior to the fall. I think that war in heaven happened then. So maybe he made some kind of a challenge to God that, uh, oh yeah, you give me the earth, let me be the ruler, and... Uh, I'll show you what your people are like. I don't know. That's just kind of like my theory. Uh, but he is called the prince of the power of the air. And he's called the god of this world. Well, there's going to come a day when the lease, his lease is going to run out. All right. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Did Jesus correct him and say, Oh no, this world is, uh, you're not the ruler. Uh-uh. No, Jesus didn't say that. What did he say? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee hence, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. Ah. They set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, we should answer these devils with scripture. Verse 11. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled, in your ears, and all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye shall surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard in Capernaum, do also hear in thy country. But I tell you of a truth. Oh, I'm sorry. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elias the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saying, saving Naaman the Syrian. In other words, most of the people didn't uh, believe the prophets. You know? There was just only one leper got cleansed. And the woman that was a widow, she believed the Lord, Lord's prophet. And she, she was fed. You can read about that. I think I did a study on that. I remember reading it. I'm not sure if I did a study on that or not. Pretty sure. Uh, I've got over a thousand different studies, people. It's, you know, it's hard to remember them all. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him under the brow of the hill whereupon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished 
at his doctrine, for his word was with power. There you go. All right, let's take a look at Luke chapter 18, verse 9. And he, Jesus, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Jesus speaking. Two men went in up uh, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee. One of the you know, fair all the Pharisees were Jews, right? The one a Pharisee and the other a publican, a Republican. Oh, wait, no, no, a public publican, not a Republican. What was a publican? Tax collector. An IRS agent. Oh, yeah. So you got a Jew and an IRS agent. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So, the temple was to be a house of prayer. All right, so turn to Luke 19. Remember, Jesus is getting ready to go to Jerusalem to be crucified. It's coming up. Uh, I guess we'll do verse 37. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with, uh, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Now this uh, ties in with the. Uh, Matthew 24, when Jesus prophesied that the temple would be, not one stone would be left upon another, it would be cast down. In 70 AD, Rome surrounded Jerusalem and leveled it, pretty much, burned it, destroyed it. Some say that up to a million Jews died in that, because the Christians uh, well, what well, what happened was, uh, General, I forget which one, it might have been Titus, uh, General Titus or whoever surrounded Jerusalem with um, a legion, and there was a, another legion coming, at least one other, and instead of... Um, trying to take Jerusalem with just one legion, 
even though he had it surrounded, he pulled back, waiting for reinforcements. Well, the Christians that believe Jesus in Matthew 24, when they said, well, when you see Jerusalem encompassed about with our armies, flee to the mountains. Well, that's what they did. They grabbed all what they could carry, their valuable stuff, whatever, and they 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 fled. They left Jerusalem, and all the Jews were thinking, "Oh, the Romans left. We've won," because they were rebelling. They were fighting against Rome. They had rebelled, and they thought, "Oh, well, we won. They they disappeared. You know, they they withdrew. We won. We won." Well, guess what? At least another. Uh, Roman legion came and reinforced them and then they General Titus or whoever it was I think it was Titus uh, surrounded Jerusalem again and all those that didn't believe the words of Jesus were killed or sold into slavery but the Christians escaped because they believed the words of Christ in Matthew 24 see God can and does oftentimes give an escape for his people. So, and this right here, what we just read, is basically ties into 24, Matthew 24. Verse 45, and he went into the temple. Christ went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer. My house is the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Well, of course. Herod, right? And he taught daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. Why? They were appointed by Herod and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. You see, this is the thing. The devil's kids wanted to control the temple. And they, uh, but the people, the common people, recognized what Christ was, and they're listening to him. But Herod's people, they want to get rid of Christ, but um, they're afraid of the people. They don't want a riot. That's why they had that trial in the middle of the night. They didn't want uh, the people to know what's going on. You know, if you had a whole bunch of godly people and the politicians and the police were doing ungodly things. Uh, you ever seen that scene in uh, Frankenstein where they stormed the castle? Yeah, with pitchforks. Yeah. Yeah. If we had godly people, the wicked would be afraid to do stuff openly. But we don't. So that's the way, that's the name of that tune. Now I got a question for everybody. Perhaps somebody could help me out here. In the early to mid 90s, there was a movie that came out. I never saw it. I don't remember the name of it. But the theme was this. Uh, they said the Son of God came, Christ, whatever, in modern day times. And he started preaching in these mega churches. And uh, between the, the mega church pastors and the government wanted to get rid of him. And they were chasing him all over the place, trying to catch him. And uh, they said, oh, yeah, well, this is the Son of God. Does anybody remember the name of that movie? Because it was on for a very short period of time. And I was not interested at the time of seeing it. But then it was removed. I guess it had too much truth in it for the uh, you-know-who's Hollywood. And I don't even know if it was a Hollywood production. It might have been something different. I don't know. Does anybody remember the name of this movie? It was in the mid-90s, uh, early to mid-90s. 
I'm thinking around 93, 94, maybe 95, somewhere around there, uh, about the Son of God coming in modern day times and the government and the mega church preachers trying to get rid of him. So if anybody knows it, remembers the name of that movie, I'd really appreciate it. I'd, I don't even know if you could watch it on YouTube, but I don't even know what the, it, the name of it is, so... All right, well, I'll, uh, this will be, uh, I guess we'll do one more uh, study. So, All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen.